these things have have uh, have turned into one of my favorite conversations of the week. Uh, and it isn't always about uh, photography. It isn't always about business. Uh, but for me, they're they're very stimulating, and they definitely move me forward. and And I hope as you guys have been tuning in, they've been beneficial for you too. Uh, if you've never been to a fast track coaching event before, uh, let me explain how it works. Basically, I'm on the on uh, a conversation with a friend somewhere in the world. They get piped in, and and the point isn't for you to spectate about it. The the, the point is for you to engage the conversation. There's a couple ways for you to do that. One is uh, on Twitter. If you want to actually um, send a message with at Dane Sanders in the in the message, I'll be picking up that feed and and can uh, reference that and bring you into the conversation that way. But a, a better option is actually to, if you're watching this on the vocal interface through the blog, uh, you can just um, uh, click on the little light bulb or the ask a question button and ask a question. We'll pull that on screen. Some of you might even be brave enough to plug your webcam in and we can even pull you, you on screen with us if you're interested in that. Um, but the point is for you to be a participant, not just a, um, not just a, a, a lurker. Uh, but of course, you know, whatever suits your fancy. If you want to just watch, no problem. Um, but today's conversation is is a exciting one for me. Uh, I met uh, Jeremy Cowart uh, about a year ago um, in person, and then and we had known each other a little bit online before that. But uh, Jeremy's somebody who has made significant impressions on a lot of people, both with his work uh, with a camera, his work as an illustrator, uh, his work uh, in giving back through things like Help Portrait. Um, his work uh, with you know celebrities he shot around the planet as well as uh, those who've been suffering uh, in places like Haiti and other other spots uh, he's a TEDx speaker he's just done a lot of things and uh, and my experience of him although the, all those things are impressive uh, what I'm most impressed by is is his humanness uh, I just dig him as a friend and uh, he was gracious enough to come on and and chat today uh, so welcome uh, Jeremy Cowart to, to the thank show. you Thanks for having me, Dane. Really appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's my pl <laughs> it's my pleasure, man. And and people people have been jumping on quick, uh, and they will continue as the show goes along. But maybe to get started, Jeremy, could you just share a little bit of of uh, your journey recently? Because I, I know a lot of people have some context. Hmm. The things I just mentioned earlier, different things mm -hmm. you've been doing. But I also know you you've been adventuring in some new territory recently. And why don't you get us up to speed about the things that are getting you most excited uh, creatively? Yeah, I think, I, uh, I think I'm just very, a very curious individual, very curious artist. And, you know, I love photography, but, you know, I started out as a painter and uh, as just an artist. And I think that artist has always been inside of me, but I've ventured into other things like graphic design, web design, and now photography. But uh, the the artist in me still is there, wanting to come out. So lately, I've been doing some video illustrations. I've been directing actual videos as well for uh, record labels, um, developing some iPhone apps. Uh, I've been speaking a little bit. So just kind of, I don't know, trying to spread my wings. The the idea of becoming a traditional photographer for the rest of my life kind of bores me, to be honest. And so I. Uh, I uh, just just there's a lot of other things I want to pursue and explore. So hmm. that's it's funny. Yeah, um, I I love what you're saying because it seems like uh, you're not alone. There's a lot of uh, folks who who maybe have become known with a camera uh, or some mm -hmm. particular genre, but for you to kind of categorize yourself and in multiple genres makes sense to me, especially given that you discovered photography out of graphic design and you know other mm -hmm. other places. Um, but talk a little bit about this, like uh, just so I get clear. You said video illustrations. That I don't even know what that is. I, I've always <laughs> thought of illustrations as as like two dimension or three dimensional, you know, creations that you you draw and that sort of thing. What is a video illustration, and what are some examples of this? Like iPhone apps, and what are you doing? I, just, yeah. I want to hear more about it. <laughs> yeah, well, the the video illustrations, um, I'm sure they exist. I'm sure a lot of people have done them before, um, but it's something I'd never seen, and I just became curious about the the process of fully documenting uh, 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 art creation from the time that I start drawing on paper to the time that I create in Photoshop to the final piece. And the next 
the next versions of those I want to get get on canvas and start painting on top of the final piece so it's really just combining all forms of media that really fascinates me and I've been using uh, and just learning the process of video so I I don't know I just feel like we tend we tend to get stale as photographers and as creators and we we use the same tricks over and over we put our lights in the same spot over and over so I really just wanted to to dive I've back into learning. I don't know. I just felt myself getting a little stale, so I'm trying to insert things into my life to to mix it up creatively. I guess you could say. Hmm. So. Hmm. Well, you know, some of the stuff I, as you're describing, I'm like, oh, I know what he's talking about now. He's talking about that portrait he did of of the lead singer from Radiohead, or the the, the thing you did for mm -hmm. Easter. Um, and and to actually, I know for me, as I watched that creation unfold in in fast forward time. Um, I was one of you know the thousands of people who retweeted it and kind of let people know about it. Not because you know you wrote me and said, "Will you tweet this?" But it was because I was so I was moved by it. I thought it inspired mm -hmm. me to to want to go do some some creating on my own. In fact, what it actually reminded me of was the first time I saw uh, Jim Natchway um, in uh, War Photographer in that documentary film of him mm -hmm. where they actually had a camera. It was kind of it yeah. was just when film was transitioning to digital and had the camera over his shoulder and you actually see mm -hmm. his settings as he's making the adjustments right. and then how what what he was thinking about is I mean I almost wanted an an audio commentary as yeah. as yeah. you were going through that process and what why would you make this decision or that it's very inspiring um, do you but it also it, it also raises something for me because when you did that in a sense you were inviting voyeurs like me to watch what you were doing and to mm -hmm. in a, in a, you kind of letting your secret sauce out like rather than just kind of putting up the the final result um, what, do you, yeah. what do you think about that is that uh, I'm sure you have ideas on kind of putting that out for people what what occurs to you yeah I just I think especially with the portrait of Christ video I created um, if you were to see that final piece, you would be like, oh, this is, you know, this is whatever. You might love it or hate it, but uh, it just is what it is, and most art is that way. But to be able to see it created and see that I was using the face of culture, the face of people, to create that face of Christ, you understand the story and what went into it, and there's just a lot more, and it's just fun. It's just fun to watch, and um, it, it's a little bit, I know for Photoshop gurus, I've gotten a lot of comments from people just being able to enjoy the process. So I think there's a lot of things conceptually there and creatively that, that take it a bit further than just seeing a, a final piece of art. And quite frankly, I want to do a lot more of it. I have uh, a ton of ideas and I think it'd be really cool to in a gallery where you walk around a gallery and you see all the, these pieces of art but next to them there's LCD screen showing the video of those pieces of art being made and also I love the idea that somebody could buy a print of this and it could be hanging in their house and you know somebody comes over and says hey I love this picture on your wall what is it and instead of them explaining it they just say oh let me go show you a video on YouTube of how it was made you know and I just think that is merges technology uh, in a much more interesting way um, than just seeing the piece itself. So, does that make sense? <laughs> hey, dude, I'm so sorry. My my kids just ran home. And no I worries. Just, I had to step up for a second. How awkward is that? <laughs> and and my kids are literally <laughs> walking out the door this very second. Hi, uh, my kids are literally walking out the door this very second, with their mom, of course. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> cool. Will you, um, will you say that last sec that last sentence again? Because I blew it. I I had to step away. I apologize. Oh, I was just talking about how I think the you know the process of video just makes. I was saying how like if somebody has a piece of art on their wall, and then a friend of theirs comes over and says, "Hey, I love this piece of art. Um, tell me about it." And instead of telling them about it, they're able to pull up Vimeo or YouTube and show them a video of how it was created. I just think that's a much more interesting use of technology to to be able to show the the, the art being made well it's sense. interesting like it, it makes a lot of sense and and honestly it's ra it's rather progressive like when i when we think of the greats that we maybe look up to or people that we have been inspired by over the years what would it be like to have have been there like uh, uh one mm -hmm. one image that i've i've been thinking about 
uh, for I don't know why recently, but I was thinking about Annie Leibovitz's uh, picture with of John Lennon the day he died, and when mm -hmm. him and Yoko Ono, what 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 would have been a, like to have been in the apartment with them to see the decisions that right. led to that image, led to that image, and you know mm -hmm. one one person yeah. one person in the chat is right now uh, made a comment uh, that the, you know that particular image you did the the, the picture of Christ. Uh, some amazing gals at Twitter wrote, uh, Jeremy doesn't know this yet, but someday when he's gone, <coughs> awkward, uh, <laughs> that piece is going to be even more significant than he could imagine, just my take. And I think that that is mark that we leave in, in the long haul should have a greater significance in, in, in time, but how much more if we can leverage the yeah. tools we have available to us to, to share to share stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think she, I think she touches on a, an important, an important thing. I think, I think I am getting to a place of really wanting to create art that is, I don't know, I could get in trouble for saying this. I don't want to knock photography, but a lot of times when I do photography, especially for uh, record labels or TV shows, I feel like I'm creating disposable art. And what I mean by that is like, you know, when I shoot a, a famous person for, for an advertisement, you know, that photo is only going to have a very short shelf life. And, it's really not going to be used and so I'm getting to a point where I'm much more interested in creating art that is going to live way uh, way beyond just a uh, a promotion of sorts you know for a TV show or, or album so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it makes sense uh, well it, it the other part of it that I'm struck by too is um, in this interest of creating art that's going to have a, a longer shelf life or sustainability or, or just have more substance to it um, you're you're not just, you know, illustration feels like a classic kind of art form, drawing, and, mm -hmm. and even photography, although more modern, it's, it's, it's seen as kind of a, a reasonable art, art form. But iPhone apps, like, I have a, how, how are you going <laughs> to, are, are, you, are you seriously thinking about using those kinds of modern pieces as a means to be, as a tool to create with? Uh, or is it just more of a, a, a means to distribute what you want to do? Uh, both uh, and uh, and it's it's funny because I'm not trying to become uh, an iPhone app guy. I just keep having ideas where I'm like, man, somebody's got to make this app, you know, and and yeah. so it might as well be me. Uh, so it's I, I don't mean I, it's not like I need more things to keep me busy. I've got plenty to keep me busy, but I just you know because I use technology so much and I love social media and all the different stuff we have access to the more I use it the more ideas the more holes I see and I want to fill those holes and so the iPhone apps that I'm coming up with are, are not really out of boredom they're out of necessity like me just me wanting to fill a void you know yeah it, it's funny the, uh, the <laughs> so much creativity I think comes out of that that space that you're describing and I, I wish more people would, would mm -hmm. act on it, actually. Um, real quick little interlude, I want to just interrupt our conversation for a second because we, we're getting a, a bunch of questions now and I want to make sure I address them. The first one is uh, from Ryan Cole, and um, I'm glad you asked it, Ryan. He just says, what is this? And uh, let me explain what this is, this conversation. Uh, Fast Track Coaching is meant to just help people move their, their photography, their business, their creativity forward. And I invite guests on, friends that are willing to get into a conversation, and really it's meant for you guys to tune in and 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 uh, join in and when you do uh, the best way to do it is to actively engage the conversation uh, we've a, we've had 120 odd shows now uh, so there's tons of great free content you guys can check in the archives if you're interested but for today's live conversation you're gonna get a lot more value if you engage it and if you invite other people to it you can retweet it would love for you to let other people know to join it uh, but it's just a privilege that to, to have these guests on and and for you to have direct access to ask kind of whatever question makes sense for you uh, and today we're talking specifically around uh, this idea of, of finding life and creativity. And, and Jeremy is someone, as I've gotten to know him, uh, who has consistently been unsatisfied with uh, status quo and has always been interested in kind of pushing thresholds and finding new ways to create and expo explore. And, and, and that's really what this thing is about. So thanks for asking that question, Ryan. Uh, and it actually leads to my, my next question for you, Jeremy. And um, uh, it actually has to do with this thing that you made, this this Life Finder DVD, that um, I I love. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a chance to go through this more than once. My wife is like, "Would you turn off that conversation with 
because you had that long conversation with Zach in the middle of it. And <laughs> I kept watching it. And, and, oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's a, mm -hmm. fun, a lot of nuggets in there. Um, and, you know, and you're, uh, Zach's been a guest and we've been in a bunch of conversations. But for those who, who haven't had a chance to look at the DVD, this idea of a life, being a life finder, the way you self-describe yourself as someone who is you're interested in finding life, can you, can you explain what that means mm -hmm. for folks who have not seen the DVD um, to get a, a better context for how you, how you connect this, this category or phrase or label called life finder relative mm -hmm. to what you try to do creatively and artistically? Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't really this, uh, it wasn't a predetermined title or a predetermined concept. It was really, when the DVD was finished, we looked at the scope of it and all of the things that were on it. And I was trying to, we were trying to come up with a name. And as I looked, as I looked through all the contents of it, I just realized there was this one running thread. And that was in everything I do, you know, my job is to, is to find life, whether it's in a story or, you know, bring an image to life through lighting or bring a client's ideas to life. Like that's, that's the main running thread through all the art that I create. And so Life Finder was, was really just like a, uh, kind of realizing that that's what I was after the fact, which I like, cause you know, I just wanted to put as much <laughs> valuable content as I could on there um, without having some weird concept beforehand. I know a lot of people work the other way around, but I just felt like it just felt right. So um, I don't know if that answers your question or not. Well, it, 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 my it, cat just jumped up to join us. Well, maybe I can get so my bulldog. She says Zoe, hi. Zoe, where's my bulldog? <laughs> <laughs> I heard the cat in the background, so I'm glad you. Um, so the, this life finder <laughs> thing, uh, I, I, I'm satisfied with your response, but I, I'm, I'm more intrigued by what the implications are. Like I, the way I, I built uh, build today's conversation was around this and how much I think it really does. In fact, on, I'll just be candid. I actually thought about about my book Fast Track, and I thought Fast Track Photographer or Fast Track Business Plan. What a lame title! Why didn't I call it like Life Finder? Like that—that that is so much cooler. Uh, <laughs> a, a way to describe kind of That's funny. what what creative people are up to, and I'm wondering, like, so this was a helpful descriptor of what you ended up creating when you finished the the, the two DVD set thing. But for someone who's mm -hmm. interested, like the folks that are at home watching this thing, who are who are really mm -hmm. wrestling with you know the identity question, like, what am I? Am I, am I a photographer? Am mm -hmm. I a part-timer? Am I a full-timer? Am I an artist? Am I a, a, a business guy or person? Um, mm -hmm. uh, a creative artist? Life Finder, it, it's this kind of new category or label, but how can someone listen to that idea of being a Life Finder and, and self-associate with it in a way that would be constructive? Or, or maybe a better question would be, uh, what's a takeaway for someone who's listening to this to go, okay, if I wanted to consider myself as a life finder or to aspire to some of the things or the values that Jeremy's after, what should mm -hmm. I be thinking about? What should I be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, um, that's a loaded, that's a loaded question. I mean, for me, the, the DVD uh, is really a very, very focused effort for me to put as much as I know on that DVD because I know I know, you know, some of the, the training stuff can be a, a sore spot for a lot of the photography community. So I just wanted to put as much content on there as I could. I mean, there's seven photo shoots. There's uh, all the gear I use. There's all the uh, post-processing I do, which, in my opinion, was one of the biggest, I guess, you know, secrets that I released. Um, but, uh, and so, and so I don't know that I'm, like, telling people to, to necessarily become a life finder. Life finder was really just a name for me to frame, to do the framework. But if I were to to insert, you know, uh, that much meaning behind it, I think it's really just this idea that, you know, it's really about uh, um, quality and not just. Or, I'm sorry, it's about uniqueness and not just good photography or good art. Like a lot of a lot of the photo industry right now seems to be, or a lot of photographers that I talk to they'll say, why aren't I getting work? Why aren't I getting hired? And they'll show me their portfolio and their images are awesome. You know, there, there's, there's quality there. There's good lighting. There's there, the images are sharp. There's good color, 
but I'm just missing a voice, you know? I, I don't see their unique stamp on their photography. And, and, you know, to make it these days in the business, whether that's, you know, wedding photography or senior portraits or shooting bands or shooting commercial advertising, you know, I know the clients in my world are not looking for good. They could care less about good because anybody these days can do good. Um, it's about unique. It's about finding people that have a really unique style to their work. And so, um, you know, you could say that, that Life Finder is, is bringing, bringing that life to your, to your images. Um, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. they're doing unique, have, having your own voice, your own style. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's really helpful. And, and I'm with you, man. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not really thinking, like, what's the new thing that people can call each other. I, I, there, but there's something embedded in, in that labeling, even the creative labeling of kind of what you're, what you're trying to accomplish with the DVD, but also what you try to accomplish mm -hmm. in life. And, and I, I, you're really tapping into it, this whole idea of kind of finding soul in your work or uh, I, something core, something that mm -hmm. uh, you're at stake for. I mean, I don't know what the right language is, but uh, that unique mm -hmm. stamp on creativity. Um, uh, I, I'm with you. Uh, and at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to put myself in the seat of someone listening in. And mm -hmm. they might be going like, okay, well, that's that's all fine and good for, for the guy who, who has all the clients and is doing all the things that you're doing. Um, and, and I know that's a, that's an easy bubble to pop, uh, quickly, but, mm -hmm. um, to, from the perspective of, of not trying to defend or not, just to kind of hear for the person who's just starting out or just struggling or just trying to find a spot, how do you candidly talk to those people if you're having coffee with them and they're honest, they're just mm -hmm. saying like, look, I, I know I want I want to put a more soul in my work and all that sort of thing, but honestly, I'm just trying to feed my kids, or I just got to figure right. out a way to to make it. Um, how how do you how do you engage those folks in a way that's constructive because that can help them move along in their artistic craft, but also, um, you know, speak to the pragmatics of of living in a challenging time. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's a good question, uh, and I think that's the heart of why people are listening today. Um, uh, so I, I agree with you. I mean, I get frustrated when people, you know, say things like, Oh, Jeremy has an agent. He has all this stuff going for him. And you know, they forget, I, I just hate being put on a pedestal cause they forget how normal I am. You know, I'm living with my wife and two kids. I'm living, I live a very normal life. And so, you know, I'm always out trying to find the next job, trying to pay my bills, trying to figure the next thing out. And you know, a few years ago, I was in the same boat as them. I bought my first camera. I bought my, I bought my first mm -hmm. gear, and you know, my, my first lights. And I had to do the same thing. And I think the biggest difference between, you know, the people who are successful in this industry and the people who are not is just the successful people don't take no for an answer. I mean, they just go get it. And I and I get so frustrated when I hear photographers complaining about not not being able to pay their bills or not being able to provide when they're not hustling you know it's yeah. it's one thing to yep. com to complain when you're hustling and you're still not doing it but i mean i could i could sit here for the next 24 hours and tell you stories of photographers i know even in the last year that have gone from zero to 60 because they don't stop they don't stop shooting personal work they don't stop creating i mean there are so many examples of of just people who hustle um mm -hmm. And I mean that that the word hustle could go down a lot of different things, but I think, you know, I look at a guy like my friend Joey Lawrence, and he just doesn't stop. I mean, he's always planning, always executing. My friend Nick Onkin is a very uh, successful advertising photographer, but he doesn't stop shooting personal work. When he's not shooting, making a lot of money, he's out shooting on his own for no money, and. Uh, a lot of people that are out there struggling, they just sit around and, and tend to complain, well, I don't have an agent or they, you know, or I can't afford that camera or I don't live in LA. There's all kinds of excuses, but there really shouldn't be. I mean, I really believe that. I believe that if you have a, uh, a basic Polaroid camera and you live in Anchorage, Alaska, and you know that's all you've got there's no reason you can't be a very very successful photographer mm -hmm. you know because uh, i'm because i because i'm seeing it done i'm sorry go ahead right 
No, I, I'm with you, and I, I love the examples he gave. I mean, uh, I don't know Joey, but I do know Nick, and, and you're, he's exactly what you described. Like, he talked about a success story, um, but it's in talking to him candidly, it, it, and, and this, this seems like to be with everybody I, I know who, who I, have, I have such esteem for, they, it is this kind of dogged commitment uh, to, to creating something at all times, no matter what. And regardless of what they have in their hands, they mm -hmm. find a way. Uh, but this this intersection, mm -hmm. I, it's funny. Recently, I had um, Trey Ratcliffe was on the show recently, and we were talking about the intersection between art and commerce. Or you know, it's one thing to create this stuff; it's another thing to actually try to get someone to to compensate you for it or to to mm -hmm. to get some kind of monetary value from it. And he was pretty um, clear in his in his disciplines, like the way he approaches his art is that. He has this kind of clear demarcation where he says, okay, for this, and he, he's in a situation where he's, that he's created where half of the year he does nothing mm -hmm. but run around the planet and, and, and create for the sake of creating without, in his words, uh, a clue as to how he's ever going to make a dollar with any of it. And, but, but he's, mm -hmm. he's, com he's committed to, to, to keeping the, the artistic efforts as pure as he possibly can. And then he has this like line mm -hmm. where he crosses and he goes, okay, now that I've made all this stuff, what am I going to do with it? And, and, and he, then he spends mm -hmm. a lot of creative energy around putting this in the right form in the right way. Um, what, what do you think of that kind of approach of, of keeping these the art and commerce separate, but then having a kind of a clear spot where you go, I'm going to transition from, I made this stuff. Now I'm going to put the stuff out uh, in a way that could be, um, uh, sellable, and I, I should also mention too that this is assuming that it's not like wedding work where it's around a particular job, uh, but that you actually can create and then put it on display. But uh, what do you think of his his approach? Is mm -hmm. that is that a wise way, or does that resonate with how you work at all? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it resonates with where I am right now. Uh, you know, because I've been I've kind of been on cruise control. But, you know, right now at the these video illustrations I'm doing, I'm getting back to the, the heart of who I've always been as an artist and quite frankly I'm enjoying it a lot more than I am doing my photo shoots so I'm trying to figure out ways I'm trying to carve time to do a lot more of it and then because I know that my clients who I'm doing normal photography for, for I know they'll appreciate it and hopefully even hire me for it and so uh, you know, like I said, in my industry, unique wins, and so uh, you know, I don't, I don't think a lot of my work is nearly as unique as it could be, and so I'm trying to kind of dive back in, into my original passion of being an artist to kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say <laughs> find myself sounds really cheesy, but uh, but I'm kind of just getting back to the roots of of what I was originally inspired about, and I'm doing it for. For, for no money, I'm not doing it for anybody, I'm just doing it for myself, but it's given me lots of new ideas and fresh ideas that that are already having an impact um, on my overall creativity. Like yesterday I was in Louisiana doing a job for a client and I can tell a difference in just my way of thinking and my creativity because I've been trying new things and really stretching myself over the last two or three months. Hmm. What, what would be an example of a stretch for you where you you've tried so, like you didn't go back to your bag of tricks and you, you tried something that especially with a client uh mm -hmm. any examples you can come that come to mind that you don't want to share well i just think i just think stretching is learning i mean you know like i said i i found myself being on cruise control what i mean by that is showing up to every job and using the same tricks doing my same style of lighting or doing my same post-production just kind of doing what I know whereas lately I've been learning new software I've been learning new ways to use software I already have um, and so when I say stretching I really just mean learning and um, finding hmm, new ways helpful. to do things and so yeah, yeah and so like you know yesterday I showed my client uh, the Discovery Channel I was working with Discovery Channel yesterday and I showed them these art videos I'm doing and you know, they're like, wow, that's really different, you know, but we actually think we can maybe use that for one of our shows. And so, hmm. I don't know, it's, it's just, and, and it's showing my client that, that there's much more to me than just 
photo shoots because to them you know a lot of photographers start blending together so if I can give them something new to remember me by it only gives me that much more advantage to kind of stand out from the crowd um, and I told them about help portrait and I told them about um, a lot of the different things I'm doing so the goal for me is to is, is to kind of brand myself as being different from the rest of the industry um, just so that they'll you know again they'll want to come back to me oh remember that I, that guy we used that had all the ideas and was doing the art videos you know those things are are different and uh, mm -hmm. and I like to try to figure out how that works I'm not doing my art videos for that reason but I'm just trying to figure out how to 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 take that personal work and leverage it in my uh, commercial yeah. work. Yeah, I like that so. word leverage. Yeah, that, that's what it sounds like to me, and and in and, and the best of ways. I I also love the way you describe mm. stretching because I've had a lot of guests on who say you know stretch your creativity or go further, and and when you frame stretching as really mm. just a commitment to curiosity and learning, and and you know mm -hmm. when something occurs to you, doing something with it. Uh, that that's something that I think anyone who's listening could take access and and in fact I wonder if even as you guys are listening, uh, what might come mm -hmm. to mind for you right now where you go oh, what what would it look like for me to stretch today in this one idea somewhere mm -hmm. uh, with a tool or whatever so mm -hmm. so thank you for that um, I want to I want to yeah. go a little further with an idea that you talked about earlier and I, I don't want to spend too much time on it but I it's important enough for me because I, I do hear a lot of a lot of um, uh, complaining uh, in our industry and uh, and and not just our industry I think in the creative fields and and uh, I, I want to talk about the nature of if I'm in a place where I find myself complaining a lot like without judgment or mm -hmm. good bad right wrong but just kind of in a place where I'm kind of discouraged or down or uh, a, a word that I've used mm -hmm. that I've gotten in a lot of trouble for is you know I just feel grumpy I meant it to be light-hearted word but uh, that's that, that's a word that's been associated to me, and I um, I actually have a lot of compassion because I, I I get grumpy a lot and I get discouraged and down a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I find myself in that place, or if you've ever found yourself in that kind of negative space, what what have you done to to constructively get to enthusiasm again, or or get to curious, like to trade in uh, mm -hmm. any kind of negativity or a, a, a entitlement or a bias <laughs> towards complaining? and found yourself in a better space. What techniques do you use to, to get there? You know what I mean? Does that uh, make it's a great, yeah, n no, it definitely makes sense. It's a great question because I, I do get there, I wouldn't say frequently, but I, I get there, I would say once or twice a year, you know, every six mm -hmm. months or so I find myself, like just a few months back I really had gotten burnt out in a lot of ways. Um, and I think ultimately, I just I just try to step away and take a break. I mean, this might sound weird, but sometimes I'll uh, I know recently I unfollowed a lot of the people in the photo industry, and it felt like it gave me. Um, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but it really was a good thing just to kind of remove my remove my uh, uh, attention on the photo industry and just kind of mm -hmm. relax and, and not and just get, dive back into my own work and what I wanted to do and um, yeah, you know because there, yeah. there there can be a lot of neg negative energy floating around in our industry and I just think it's you know I think it's silly I mean the fact that we're all you know uh, eating and sleeping in a bed and having access okay. to water every day you know if those things are happening we're living like kings so, so to say, my life sucks because I'm not getting as many jobs as the next photographer is really just ridiculous, yeah. you know. And and so when I find myself complaining or being jealous of somebody else or whatever, it's just just got to step away and go spend time with your family. I go hang with my kids, you know. My they're of course a, a huge um, source of of life for me, and and uh, and I and I research other industries you know I mean I, I listen to music I uh, research how other photographers in other fields are doing their thing like for example I love looking at the work of photojournalists I love looking at the work of um, um, you know advertising photographers who are more in the different realms of advertising I love looking outside of my genre of photography um, yeah. there's there's a lot of things I do um, but I think I think this latest burst of creative uh, energy with these these videos has it's been the most inspired I've been in a long time and and the more I create 
the more I'm inspired and the more ideas I have. So I'm actually trying to figure out, I've never wanted to be slow so bad in my life. I, like mm -hmm. I'm honored to, to have work coming in, but I'm excited for when it slows down again so I can keep uh, mm -hmm. doing more personal work. So mm -hmm. That's great. You know, um, the, yeah. we are beginning to get some questions in here, and, and I want to start pulling them up. And if you're listening and you want to ask any questions of Jeremy or, or just join the conversation in some way, uh, be sure to click the Ask the Question button so that way we can we can pull your question in. And uh, the first question I want to bring in is, is Kevin. Um, uh, he asked the question, when you hit your creative wall and you feel like you have nothing good in the tank, uh, how how do you recharge? And on some level, you answered that a moment ago relative to kind of the negativity thing, but mm -hmm. specifically around around the the creative process. Anything you'd add add to that? Yeah, I just start I just start uh, you know filling my tank with uh, with other creativity, like looking at the work of other people. There's lots of websites I visit. Uh, I always have a lot of ideas when I go to live shows and hear bands play. For some mm -hmm. reason, um, I uh, there's an, actually a, a picture somebody posted on Twitter recently where it was like the 21 steps on how to rejuvenate your creativity, and I thought it was pretty brilliant. Hmm. Hmm. But I mean, lots of rest, lots of rest, taking a shower. I was recently reading about a writer who, when he's hitting his his walls creatively, he just keeps getting back in the shower. Sometimes he'll take 10 showers a day. Uh, cause, cause there's, there's something about the shower, man. Even for me, when I step into that space and there's nothing to do, but think, uh, things just start happening. It's, it's really quite amazing. You know, when we step away from the noise of the, the world we live in and we just isolate ourselves, it's really beautiful what happens. Um, and so, uh, so rest, showers, uh, researching other people's work, stepping away from the industry, um, vacation, <laughs> spending time with your family, uh, all of those things kind of mm. go into the mix for me. Mm. Uh, Kevin uh, followed yeah. up with a, a question that they thought that you just inspired a, a large number of, of women with that visual of, of you in the shower. So we'll keep it G-rated, but... Uh, no, trust me. Uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, uh, the, not the case, but, but th thanks for the, the kind thought, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, th this is an interesting question from uh, Amazing Gals. Uh, she says, um, let me see here, uh, when did you realize you truly had your own unique voice and style? And I want to add to this question, actually, because I, um, I, I, I know how you, you might minimize it. You're a humble guy, and, and, uh, but I, I, I really, I think this question is an important question because so much of, of the conversations I'm in recently have to do with, a lot to do with confidence. And not like like cockiness mm -hmm. or arrogance, but a sense of like, no, I, I have voice, I have value. I was in a conversation with uh, my friend Christine this morning about just this very topic of, of how do I put value to the things that I'm creating. And um, it seems like a lot of it has to do with having a confidence in, in my unique voice or style or signature. Um, but for you, how, how, how has this kind of evolved or emerged for you, this idea of uniqueness? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I definitely don't know when I realized that I had my own unique voice. I mean, I guess the day that, you know, an agent from Hollywood called me, that was probably a, <laughs> you know, a good sign that I was doing something right. But, um, mm -hmm. I've always kind of downplayed my my role. I've always kind of downplayed my role in in the industry and not really understood it. Or I don't know. I just I, just, I guess I don't see it. I don't. You know, it's hard to see yourself from the perspective of other people. And so, um, but I also don't want to ignore any kind of small platform I have. So that's why I like to use it for for things like help portrait. In fact, I just released my uh, TED talk on my blog and and that mm -hmm. blog post that. talks all about Oh, thanks man. But yeah, the 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 TED talk is all about using your platform and figuring out how to take whatever it is you know about whether it's, you know, your expertise on writing or cooking or social media or whatever it is and 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 using that to to benefit others. And so, um, I don't know, which is where I'm at lately. <laughs> you know, I, I love that. And, and in fact, it, it r relates to another question that we just got that um, I'm going to interpret a little bit. Uh, but Preston Jagger asked the question, 
how do street photographers or people who work only for NGOs um, or so uh, really make a living as a photographer? And I, I, I want to kind of hijack the question a little bit and push a little further because even this idea of value that you're speaking of right now of, of whatever you're doing, however, wherever you're at, creating value um, is extraordinary. And I remember mm -hmm. you told me a story, a story about a year ago uh, when you were doing those shoots for, uh, uh, I think it was E Entertainment or someone, and you you kind of mm -hmm. just went above and beyond the call, and that was the, and doing a lot with a little with a high stress celebrity person, um, and you just mm -hmm. kind of solved problems for a lot of people, and that's what you got remembered by, and that's what got you a lot of jobs. Um, would mm -hmm. you answer this kind of a question in similar ways around value, or how would you respond to a question like this? And I think by street photographers, I think, I think uh, Prashant is just basically saying like people who don't have money being thrown at them, how do they create enough value to, to make a living as a photographer? Well, uh, I think they should look up the photographer Esther Havens. Uh, Esther uh, is a good friend of mine and she does work mostly for NGOs and she travels the world shooting and I've been telling her to do a blog post on this because she has a fascinating uh, take on how she does it, but she basically educates the people who want to hire her who don't have money. She says, well, you've got employees, right? You're, you've got a staff of 10, you're paying for all this other stuff, you're paying for your building, well, why wouldn't you pay for the photos that are going to, um, you know, advertise your business or your nonprofit? And so she basically goes in and just kind of educates them, tells them why they need photography, why they need to pay for photography, and she travels the world uh, shooting and pays her bills. I don't. I mean, I'm not. I have no idea how much money she makes, but I know she's. Instead of just sitting on complaining that nobody uh, is paying her, she she goes and and find and helps them find the money. Because um, just because we're serving and doing something good doesn't mean we shouldn't be paid for it. Um, I think I think humanitarian photographers should be paid. Uh, just like normal, you know, working photographers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, are you ever uh, afraid uh, or not afraid that you and your product will become available to only an elitist crowd? Now, this is a question from Alton Strickland. Uh, I want to read it again because I want to make sure I understand it. Are you not afraid that you and your product will become available to only an elitist crowd? How, for, I guess, how would you interpret that question? And if we can't figure out the question, then we can pass on it. But... Uh, are you getting what, what Alton's asking here? I mean, the only thing I understand from that is maybe he's asking, am I afraid of only doing work for, I don't know, oh, I see. high end clientele, I guess? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, well let's that answer it in that question, direction. Alton? Well, I, I, I hope that's the case because, and even if it's not, I'd love to hear the answer because you're someone who does work for super high end clients and. And then you hop on a plane on your own mm -hmm. dime and go to Haiti. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So it seems like of all people I know, you are <laughs> you have a pretty wide spectrum of, of clients that you work with. And mm -hmm. Health Portrait, my gosh, these are people who who are on the ground uh, and you're empowering other photographers to meet mm -hmm. kind of people who, who have never had their picture taken before. Um, so I, maybe I'm answering the question yeah. for you, but I, I, don't, I don't get the impression you're afraid of, of only being available to an elitist crowd. No, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm trying to get to a point where I, I just do what I want to do. I mean, as selfish as that sounds, like if somebody has a, a $300 budget and I really believe in it and really want to do it, then I want to be able to do that. And if they have a $30,000 budget and it's something I could care less about and I don't want to do it and it, I would be selling out if I did it, then I want to be able to say no to that. Um, and so I'm, I really just want to tie, do projects that that fit within my vision and my brand and what I believe in. And, and you know, you can't always say that's the case, but um, I think if you really carve out a niche for yourself, you can. And I'm still working towards that. But um, you know, m money isn't money isn't the deal for me. The deal is doing interesting projects that I feel like I can put a, un a unique stamp on. Yeah, you know, I, I want to talk about that for so. a second, and I do, I do want to be sensitive to time because we've gone a little long, but uh, it's too good of a conversation to miss. I, I have to ask you a question about focus <laughs> because that that idea mm -hmm. of uh, um, of being able to say no to a high-paying job 
and say yes to a, uh, a low paying job because it's in line with what you're focused on or committed to. How important is that with your work? How, mm -hmm. it, 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 does that, it, does that play a pivotal role in your ability to take ground with where you want to go as a creative person? Yeah, absolutely. It's increasingly becoming important, especially in the last six months, because like I'm doing a job in the next few weeks, it's really, really low budget, but could, it couldn't align more with where I'm at with my art and creativity, and it just I'm just dying to do it. I don't care how much money they have. Um, and then... Uh, and then, you know, I, I just, I do a lot, I work a lot, and, you know, there a majority of the jobs that I do, I won't say any names, but I do a lot of work that I don't care for the product that I'm shooting for, and that's frustrating. I don't care for the music right. that that band is creating, and, and I still I still do a good job. I still put all my energy into it and try to make the client really happy, but um, but I love the idea of being able to look back on the body of my work and and know that it aligned with things that I always believed in, you know. Mm -hmm. Does well, that make Jeremy, sense? I, <laughs> it makes it makes a lot of sense, and and I love it because it's honest, and and that you're holding the tension of, you know. I, I guess my my heart just bleeds for the photographer, the folks who are listening in, who who really is is wrestling with. They they feel a call in their gut to do this kind of work, and they're mm -hmm. doing the best they can, and they're mm -hmm. struggling right now or whatever. And, and I think what you're saying speaks to a, a pragmatic reality, but also just invites them to kind of go again, mm -hmm. lean in, try again, go deeper. And, and it all, I think what yeah. I'm getting in the, in the chat room and every, kind of everywhere in this conversation is a sense of uh, you get it, you're, you're, one, you're one of us, you know, and um, mm -hmm. everyone struggles. And that's part of what it means to, to try to create. It's, it is a struggling act. It's a giving birth. And... If you're not struggling, my hunch is mm -hmm. you're, you're probably not being very creative. So um, I, I do want to be yeah. honoring of your time. So go ahead. If you could say anything else. No, I'm good. I, I wanted to say, yeah, I wanted to say one last thing on, the, on that note. I mean, I agree. I think, I think struggling is, is, the new, is the new normal. I mean, everybody is struggling. Uh, and, and if I'm being quite frank, I mean, I don't live nearly as... Uh, glamorous a life as people think I do. I mean, I'm fighting, I'm fighting for the next job just like everybody else. I mean, we're all in this together. And so uh, I know the perception is that, is that I live on some kind of jet setting cloud with assistance and gear and, and it's really not the case. I mean, this is a, this is a tough industry no matter how successful you are. Um, and so, you know, you can either look at that and complain and whine or you can mm -hmm get off right. your your butt and and do something about it and and mm -hmm. i choose to to not stop i mean i really really don't stop whether there's money coming in or not i just don't stop and and the people who are succeeding that i know are doing the same thing they just they're just not mm -hmm. stopping and that's our that's our only option so mm -hmm. i'll leave it at well, that thank you man <laughs> thank you well you know uh, if yep. you're at home i uh this is not so this isn't required or anything. I'm, I'm just doing this because I, I love this DVD. I was one of the first to listen to it or to watch it and go through it. And so uh, if you're at home, find a way to get uh, Life Finder, the DVD. I'll, we'll put a link uh, in the chat room for you guys, but it's just, uh, it's lifefinderdvd.com. Is that correct, Jeremy? Yeah, lifefinderdvd.com. That's the one. Great. So I really encourage you Thanks, guys. guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. The, uh, before you go off, Jeremy, I just want to say this one thing. Uh, there's, um, on this disc, it was a fun little moment. When I went through this disc the first time around, I thought I got to the end of disc one where you go through like the vision toolkit, the workflow and everything. The interview with Zach and I'm like, that's amazing. And then I went, there's a whole other disc with six photo shoots and all the band work and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. this is a, a massive value. And I just want to go on record as saying, thank you for creating this. I think there's a lot of folks that yeah. who will have a ch chance to look at this and, and be inspired to go to the next level with their own creativity. And uh, just publicly, I just want to say great job on this, man. It was a killer job, and I'm really, really thanks, glad man. to have it. Yeah. So no, I really thanks again appreciate for being it. on the show. Cool. And we'll uh, see you next time. Yep. Thank you for having me. All right, man. All right. Sounds good. See you. Bye, Jeremy. Bye, everybody.